All right, hello everybody. My name is Warren, WRJZ673, K5WEO. I'm going to show you how to make this flower pot antenna that I've been talking about. Get the uh, instructions off the internets, and these are your numbers that you're going to be working with. Your top element here, I've already stripped away and exposed the inner core of the uh, coaxer. There it is. Did that on one of my other attempts to make this video. So, uh, yeah, I went ahead and pulled that off. So you see there we've got the uh, inner braid still inside there. We just remove it, set aside, save it for scrap. Uh, all right, this top element is going to be 457 millimeters. 457 millimeters from the top to your cut. And you're going to come down another... 447 millimeters, 447 millimeters, and here I've already scored it with my tiny little meat cleaver. That's where our coil is going to begin. Now, we're talking about the coil, I've already pre drilled this. If you see this janky pattern that I've drilled down here that I started with, uh, well, I'm going to act like that was just for reference material. It's not. That's where I was going to put the coil originally, but I want a little more slack so that that stays up and down rather than tilting with the antenna hangs. Either way, I came up here a little bit. Whenever you're drilling your holes, however long a piece of PVC you use, you're going to want to keep in mind that these zip ties are kind of difficult to get in and out of those holes. Sometimes you've got to be able to stick your finger and another tool inside there to turn it. You're going to want to make sure you turn your zip ties. Just curl it over roll it up so that whenever you stick it in there you'll be able to poke it back through that other hole and get on it with a pair of pliers or something all right once you've got your holes drilled in a pattern something similar to this you can do it in a fan either way you want to you want your coax to be able to come up and then turn into 90. now you can go right or you can go left it don't matter this particular one i'm going to the left uh, all right uh, now what i did was i pre-drilled uh, the top here, and I added some coax, there are some zip ties also. Uh, that's going to be the top of our coil. I didn't measure this out, but it's going to be nine turns. Whatever, uh, whatever former you're using, it may vary by a millimeter or two. I've seen some of these 25 millimeters. I've heard of some of them being 27. So I think it's, it's actually about 27 OD. Uh, so I can't tell you exactly how much to mark out for your coil uh, but normally when I'm making these I make them just the antenna only and it looks something like this right but I start with the coil but since I'm doing this antenna with the feed line included so that I have no breaks in the line where moisture can get in uh, I've went ahead and I've marked out the coil so I've got my uh, top element uh, my second element and then my score mark is down here where I'm going to begin my coil. And I've measured out 116 millimeters for this particular former is what we're going to want to mark out. And that would be the bottom of your coil. And the reason I did that was so that I could mark both sides of my former here and have that all free drilled. If you don't want to pre-drill it, you can just rack your coil and then, you know, move that first layer to the side and drill your holes. You know, you decide how you want to do it, sloppy or high speed, it's up to you. Uh, but it's super simple, I'm making it sound way more complicated than it is. What we're going to do is we're going to take our former that we've already pre-drilled and we're going to begin our coil locating that first score mark. And I'm going I'm to put that first score mark just on the top edge of our where we want our coil to start. Let's see, think about the way that's going to wrap. We're just going to wrap nine turns, not counting the first one. Once you go around once, that is one turn, but don't count the first loop that you lay down there. Let's see if I can do this the right direction the first time. That would be great. Just gonna wrap 
keep on wrecking. Just like Jay Z. Do a little tactical turns here. Tactical turns, very similar to a regular turn, it just costs more. Tactical turn the other direction. So I went the wrong way. Let's see, what do we got here? Don't count the first one. So there's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's gonna be a tight squeeze. I drilled these holes really, really tight. Uh, we're gonna have to make some adjustments probably too, so. Alright, yeah, we're gonna get them on there. We are gonna get them on there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. We're right on the money, ain't we? Gonna <laughs> dance a little jig here. All right, and we are right in there on that zip tie. Let's pull up above. All right. I'm gonna rotate that coil just a little bit so that I can pull a little more out the top. And get that first score mark up above the coil and I like to get it to where it's coming just out of that 90 that's where I'm assuming the antenna starts and if you go a little bit long it's not a bad thing because you can always trim in tuning so if you go higher than that you know let's say your top element is supposed to be 157 if you took it to or I'm sorry correction 457 if you took it to 460 and you trimmed off those three millimeters later it wouldn't be that big a view but most of you guys know that. Just uh, you always want to, you always want to go a little bit long anyway. I didn't on this particular one. Kind of having, kind of having faith in the system, but we all know how that works. All right, there's my score mark. Let's get my zip tie strapped down, and they're curled, so they're kind of pain to get in once I've curled them, but part of the process. Strap that guy down. Right. Little antenna bondage here. There's one, two, and Tracy. Uh oh, cool, come on, well. It's alright, we're gonna wrap it up tighter anyway. Just get that good and tight around that former. Just because it looks cleaner. Probably sounds better too. Whenever I find some heat shrink big enough to wrap around these, I'll start heat shrinking the tube and everything so everything stays nice and taut together in the sun. So I leave these up here around. Uh, it's supposed to be a field expedient antenna. For me, it's a full timer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it tried to skimp us. It tried to skimp us. Let's get a nine, a niner. Let's get a niner in there. <laughs> Gotta love those pilots. Yeah. I'm just giving a little hell. I say tree. Fife. <laughs> Can't make fun of the niner guys. All right, and we got a cool. There you go. There you go. Oh, <laughs> didn't I 
it just like me. Almost finished. I think I'm done. Alright. I actually broke that zip tie on the first run because I had to disconnect this thing and take it all apart. I didn't like the way the video turned out. And then, what we're going to do, after I've got uh, a set of dikes and trimmed off these uh, zip ties, I shall put another set of zip ties down here and act like uh, I meant to drill those holes down there for a purpose. Uh, and then, like I said, I've attached my feed line to this antenna, so what I've got to do is come down here. This was a 50-foot run. Uh, less probably 45. I don't know if the SWRs are going to be okay or not. I've attached this antenna to a lot of different feed lines. Had good SWRs every other time, so I'm trying this method. You may want to try it as an independent antenna and you attach whatever various feed line you like. The only problem with that I've found is that uh, moisture gets inside those SO239s and it'll kind of throw your SWRs off. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is attach my PL259 or uh, it, whatever they call them, SO239, I don't know, to the end of my feed line, and then that'll be that. And since we're doing it, since we're here, might as well show you how to do that. Uh, might have to pause the video 